Welcome to Bristol Community College on this beautiful day. It's brilliant sunshine hidden behind clouds, a little bit of rain maybe later today. The best forecast I've heard this year so far is that summer will be on a Tuesday. Uh, this is a very meaningful event uh, for me and even more so for some other people who are here. But it's, we're recognizing 25 years of cooperative education at Bristol Community College. It's a silver anniversary celebration. Um, I was involved, most appropriate. Thank you, Lynn. I had the pleasure of being involved as a chamber exec back in the very beginning, and I had this uh, woman uh, get in touch with me. I was, in, I was also involved as a, as a volunteer here at BCC. This lady got in touch with me, and she was talking about this cooperative education program, and would I become involved, and would I help, and she's here tonight. I would like to have her stand, because this is the person who created this. Uh, she started cooperative education at Bristol Community College, and that's Jane Staples. Jane? And Jane looks exactly the same as she did 25 years ago. My hair color has changed a little over, over that time. Um, and Peg Curro, who is here, Peg is on sabbatical right now, so this is really a, a great day for her. She's back with us. She's among the people that, that uh, she works with professionally. Her sabbatical, by the way, is directly related to cooperative education. Um, but Peg, if you'd stand up. Peg is the, the second director. And I think that says something about the program and about Bristol Community College that in the 25 years that cooperative education has existed, there have been two directors of the program. I think that speaks very well for BCC. Um, you're going to hear a lot from other people about the program, but I, I uh, just chatting with Peg, uh, a couple of numbers I'd like to throw out over the course of 25 years. Well, first, we'll start with this year, 244 students are participating in this year's cooperative education program. And over the course of the 25 years, it's estimated that it could be as many as 5,000 students who have been participating in or impacted by BCC's cooperative education program. And that is a huge number and a huge impact on our community. And congratulations to them. I guess the last thing that I want to say is uh, kind of from the perspective of a job I used to have, Roy now has uh, the job as the president of the New Bedford Area Chamber of Commerce, the best job in the region. Whenever you decide to leave, Roy, give me a call. I'm ready to go back. Um, but uh, from that perspective, the, the perspective of a chamber exec, as Roy I'm sure would agree, BCC is very important because it, it's a solid connection to employers, to chamber members and other employers throughout all of Bristol County. So from that perspective, it's meaningful, and, and we, that's why I wanted to get involved with Jane and why we welcomed it. Uh, those 244 students probably are working at nearly 200 different employers over the course of time. It wouldn't surprise me if the total number of employers were well over 1,000 who were involved, because most employers get involved and stay involved with new students from year to year. So from the perspective of the school, it's also important. It gives them a connection, a meaningful, embedded connection to an important part of their community, that being the private sector or the, the business community. But all of this work is done for the students, for cooperative education students. And they're the greatest benefactor of it. I was talking with uh, one of our co-op uh, employers uh, about maybe 15 minutes ago, and she told me that they're so happy with uh, their co-op experience and their student this year that they've hired the student, They're gonna be working for their, for their business. And that is a story I hear every year from BCC employers. So the benefit to the student in terms of gaining some practical experience that's directly related to their education and measured as being related to their education, that's really good stuff. But when someone can go out there and, and they can actually walk away from the experience with a job, which has happened many, many times, I think that speaks very well of, of BCC uh, too. So with that, the next thing that I get to do is bring up somebody who, if you ever call here, answers the phone every day. Um, uh, I, I called yesterday to speak with somebody here, uh, 
And Jack Sprague answered the phone and said, well, we change the world learner by learner. And is that ever true? There are many people in this room whose lives have been changed by BCC, and I count my, myself among them as somebody who went to school here and, and graduated from BCC. So this is a time of year when a lot of people are calling this building. People who uh, know that if they're gonna improve their, their chances for a better future, they need to improve their, their educational attainment, and this is where they go. If there's a silver bullet that we're looking for in our community that's going to help us as a region, not just the city of Fall River or the city of New Bedford, but regionally, it's our ability to pick ourselves up by our bootstraps educationally. It's for more of us to go to school, to go back to school, to learn more and achieve those, uh, those higher standards of, of education. BCC has been central to that over the years, but in the 10 plus years that Jack Sprague has been here, it has grown dramatically. BCC in downtown New Bedford has more than a thousand students every week that are taking classes in downtown New Bedford. The number's probably dramatically higher than just that even figure of a thousand. And BCC and UMass Dartmouth in that facility in, the, in what used to be the Star Store down, in downtown New Bedford has had everything to do with the rebirth of that city's, of the central business district in, in downtown. All of those people going there every day and being there and going into the shops and then starting to live in or around the downtown and turning it into a neighborhood. Um, there's a person, one guy, who had an awful lot to do with that in New Bedford, and the same thing has happened in many other communities, and that's the guy who has so ably led Bristol Community College now for more than 10 years, Jack Spriga. Wow, that was quite an introduction. Thank you, Jim. I don't know if you know, Jim is an alum of uh, BCC, proud alum. And uh, Jim is really a, a hero of mine. I mean, he was making, he was rich and making all that money as the head of the New Bedford Chamber, and he gave it all up. <clears throat> he gave it all up to, to start, uh, pursue a dream that he knew was very, it was his dream, but he also knew it was very important for the region, and that is to start the mentoring program, Smiles. And for someone to give up, uh, you know, give up something that was safe and wonderful, and he was in doing a great job there and enjoying it uh, with the chamber, and then to move uh, to a brand new enterprise, no money, no help, uh, no staff at the time, just start it with a dream. And uh, that's the way so many of you started your businesses, and uh, our students are starting with a dream. So, Jim, I'm very, very happy uh, for you and the great work that you're doing. I know you'll continue it. Um, Jim is... Uh, 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 unequaled uh, supporter of education. There were two, two uh, terrible statistics for our region that um, I just really hate, and that is the uh, low level of uh, uh, li li literacy here in the, uh, in the region and the low level of educational attainment. Both of those uh, I take personally uh, because I'm in education. I'm supposed to fix those. And, um, and we're doing what we can to make our services available throughout the region. Um, Jim mentioned the, uh, I'm, I'm actually in, well, I'm in my 11th year now, and we've grown 71% in those 11 years. Uh, we moved into Attleboro and New Bedford and, uh, and even Taunton. But the idea is to bring opportunity uh, through education uh, to the uh, people of the region uh, to handle those two terrible statistics that, uh, uh, two areas of concern that we have, and we all should be, uh, take those so seriously. Well, uh, the, uh, Way back, uh, when I started, I hate to tell you how long ago it was, th some 36 years ago, my first job as a faculty member in Richmond, Virginia, uh, involved cooperative education. Um, uh, at that time, it was very unusual. Uh, it wasn't unusual to have co-op, but uh, uh, most of it was in the technical fields or the business area. And my uh, grant, the grant that I worked on, and uh, uh, was had to do with co-op for the liberal arts. Now, we take it for granted today, but it was an unusual concept back in those days. And uh, so I'd go knocking on the doors of newspapers and uh, the uh, Virginia Museum in Richmond and uh, the archives and places where liberal arts uh, writers and researchers might, uh, our students might have an opportunity. And I saw firsthand the value of co-op. 
And I had known about co-op, of course, in the business world and in the technical world, uh, the wonderful things that students in those areas were doing thanks to the employers. Uh, so uh, it's across the curriculum. It's available for everyone. And uh, uh, I'm very excited about uh, cooperative education. It's an example I always use when I get on my uh, soapbox about education at BCC. Yes, we have wonderful academic activities, but I always uh, emphasize, and I did last night with new students, uh, the um, holistic education. What, what happens beyond uh, the classroom, face-to-face uh, uh, -face classroom or virtual for that matter, and that is that it enriches the, uh, uh, the BCC experience, enriches our students, uh, and co-op is a jewel of that kind of program. By uh, coincidence, tomorrow we have a service learning uh, breakfast, and the same thing with service learning as, we, as our students go out into the community, become embedded, and in fact the community becomes embedded as part of their education. So uh, I'm sorry it takes so long, but I get uh, I, I'm really proud of uh, co-op and uh, this idea of a holistic education. 25 years ago, I thank you. So you must have been eight when you started that. Uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce to you the current, the second uh, director of uh, our co-op uh, program, uh, Peg Carl. Peg. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I was planning to speak for a very short amount of time today, but um, I'm going to move my little spot a little bit later. Um, we are ready today, right now, to hear from uh, Congressman Bonnie Frank. So I would like to introduce Jack Sprague to come back again and make that introduction. Thank you. I'm back. I'm back. I'm sorry. <laughs> But we, uh, we didn't want to disrupt the congressman's schedule, and we're so blessed to have uh, such a supporter. Those two areas I told you about, the levels of literacy, levels of educational attainment, uh, there's no uh, more fierce battler against those two evils uh, for our region than, uh, than the congressman Barney Frank. Uh, he has been a wonderful uh, uh, supporter, not just of Bristol, but of education in general. And all of you probably have stories of uh, elsewhere in the region where uh, congressman Frank has been an enormous help. Uh, we're very proud to have him with us. Uh, uh, sometime, if you get a chance, ask him uh, about community colleges and what the uh, Federal Reserve Bank presidents say to him about community colleges, uh, uh, about how important we are for uh, workforce development. But it's my pleasure. All of you know him. Uh, uh, you know what a wonderful uh, person he is, what an asset he is for our region and for the country. A very prominent in Washington, of course. So it's my pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Barney Frank. And I want to uh, be uh, just before I want to remind him that we have a visiting delegation from Morocco uh, who is coming uh, to learn more about community colleges and entrepreneurship and uh, education. They're down there and. Uh, uh, and uh, so we're very happy to have them with us. And my pleasure to introduce Congressman Barney Frank. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Jack. Um, my Arabic is uh, kind of rusty, but bienvenue to our Moroccan friends. I will uh, answer the question Jack posed about what the heads of the Federal Reserve have said about community colleges. Uh, Alan Greenspan and Ben Bernanke have been, between them, uh, chair of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve for uh, about 20 years or more. And I have been concerned throughout my service with the growing economic inequality in this country. Obviously, when you have a capitalist system, as we have and should have, because that is the best way to produce wealth, you're going to have inequality. Inequality is necessary for the free market system to work. People need to be rewarded who work harder. The public has to tell companies what products it wants and what it doesn't want, and that's going to lead to some inequality. But too much inequality can be damaging. It can be damaging socially. It can be damaging economically. When you have a large number of people who aren't sufficiently earning, then that hurts the whole economy. So I have asked both uh, Alan Greenspan and Ben Bernanke what we could do over the long term to diminish the growing inequality that we are seeing, as both of them have acknowledged that, as I said, it's an economic problem. And independently, years apart, each one of them said the most important thing we could do was to fully fund community colleges. 
and both of them pointed out that community colleges are the best form we have of giving people the job skills they need to do the kind of work that provides them with sufficient income. And of course, as I've said also, it's particularly important as I look at the curricula of the community colleges, and particularly Bristol Community College, which is the most important of them for the district I represent, not only do people get a good education, but they also get job skills, so we don't have that false dichotomy between job skills and education, you get both, but they are job skills that are hard to outsource. People learn how to do things here that you can't do from Mumbai, that you can't do from uh, other parts of the world. We get the kind of hands-on jobs that are very good, so I continue to be a very strong supporter of uh, community colleges. And that really ties into the theme I have today about cooperative education. Cooperative is really the word we need to emphasize. There is a very mistaken view in politics today that the public sector, government, and the private sector, private business, are somehow at odds, and that you have to pick either one or the other. The fact is, in a civilized society that's trying to improve the quality of life, you need both, and you need to understand the role that each plays. There are a large number of things that are important to our lives that are best done by money in our own pockets. Families can make their own choices. But there are also things we need, if we're gonna live well, that have to be done by pooling our resources. And pooling our resources is what we call government. Tax cuts, I'll give you the most obvious example to me, tax cuts are very popular for politicians, but in all the years I've been working in government, I have never seen a tax cut put out of fire. If we want to be able, and in fact, uh, uh, last October, we had a terrible fire here in the city, in Fall River. And Mayor Flanagan made the point that if it hadn't been for some of the federal funding we had gotten through the stimulus bill of early, 19, uh, of early uh, 2009, that would have been a far worse disaster. Uh, they, we, we, obviously, it was a bad thing. Could have been a lot worse. But it's because we had put some more money into public safety. That's obvious when it comes to public safety to transportation. If we're gonna get commuter rail from New Bedford and Fall River to Boston, and it's my highest priority, then it's gonna be with public sector funding. And I believe we can do that. It is at the top of our agenda. So there are things that we have to do together. The point is that we will best maximize that effort if we see the private and public sectors cooperating. And that, of course, uh, I mean, I, I talk about cooperation. Yeah, cooperative education, that's exactly what it is. I was very pleased reading the list of employers that's in the program, that it's a mix of public employers and private employers. We are here in a private, a, a public institution. It's a publicly funded institution. It's an inadequately publicly funded institution. We ought to be putting more money into the community colleges. That's been done at the state level, but I don't blame the state. I blame, frankly, the misallocation of federal resources. I will tell you that uh, I was supposed to go to my 50th college reunion next week, and I'm not going because the military authorization bill is on the floor of the House on Wednesday and Thursday. Those are the, that, that's the bill that provides funding for the Defense Department. And it's a bill that provides much too much funding for the Defense Department. I want America to be the strongest nation in the world, but don't, we don't have to be four times as strong as everybody else in the world put together. And the problem is that as we spend more and more on the military in places where I don't think our national security is at issue, then money that ought to be going to places like this isn't there. So I am working very hard at the federal level. Yes, we need to cut our deficit. The question is not whether we cut our deficit, but how. My own view, frankly, is that uh, we, you know, we're having a big argument now about raising the debt limit. And I just checked, if everybody had voted the way I did, we wouldn't have to raise the debt limit right now. I voted against the war in Iraq, that's about a trillion dollars. We'd have another year before we'd have to do it. What we have to understand is that we have to make choices. And we have chosen to do too much in the rest of the world. And you may think, what's this got to do with cooperative education? It has everything to do with it. Because if we don't provide more adequate funding, then we don't get the full 
capacity that we can have from this kind of program. 60 years ago, Harry Truman decided he would defend Western Europe against the communists. That made a lot of sense. Western Europe was devastated from World War II. The communists under Stalin were aggressive. And so we stepped in to protect them. There's no more Soviet Union. Western Europe is no longer weak and poor. The only thing that hasn't changed is we're still defending them at a cost of billions of dollars. Against what we are defending them, no one has been able to tell me. And why they can't defend themselves, particularly when there's no great threat, no one will tell me. All they'll say is, let's keep spending the billions. So we have a right to demand that we reorient the spending, continue to protect ourselves, but not be the 911 for the rest of the world. I'd like to have a better ability for people to respond to 911 here, police and fire, than in, in every time anybody else in the rest of the world feels threatened, uh, we send them the military. But to go back, what that means is we then have the funding to have this public-private cooperation. This is a public institution that works very well with the private sector, with private employers, and look, the job of job training and of preparing people for jobs can't be done by the public sector in isolation. There's no point in preparing people for jobs that won't exist. So this cooperation between the private and public sectors is absolutely essential because what we get then is an interaction that gives the people here at BCC the understanding they need of what kind of job skills to be giving people because these are the things that will exist in the economy. So I am particularly pleased to be here because I think this cooperative education program is a prime example of what we ought to be doing in the economy as a whole. And I want to thank the people in the private sector who have been participating. Uh, my work with Jim Mathis goes back to when he was heading up the New Bedford Chamber of Commerce. And I'm very pleased that here in southeastern Massachusetts, I think we've set a very good example for the rest of the country because the private and public sectors here have been very cooperative. Uh, we have had a degree of interaction between elected officials, appointed officials, education officials, and people in various private sector jobs that's been very beneficial for everybody. I just want to close again, because you've got serious business to get down to, by urging you to join me. And again, people may wonder, what's it got to do with this? This institution does great work. It could do much better work. There are many young people, not so young people in some cases, who want the job skills. There are more people who could benefit from what BCC has to offer than we have. I remember talking to Jack a few years ago about nurses. And he pointed out, I think you had something like 43 slots for nurses. And we had, it was a few years ago, we have many, many, we have a great need for nursing in this, uh, in this state and in this country. And again, nursing is a job, you're not going to go to China and give somebody an injection here in Fall River. If we train nurses, we are training people who will be staying here and doing very important work. We should be embarrassed. We have, well, here's the deal. We have a need for nurses. We have people who would like to be nurses and would be very good at it. We have an institution that is very good at training people to be nurses, but we don't give them enough money to take advantage of that. Shame on us. And then we complain about things. And why don't we give them enough money? Because people think we've got to spend another year in Iraq. And I'm going to keep harping on this. We're told, some people, we've got to stay in Iraq. We can't get out. We never, in my judgment, should have gone in the first place because Iraq doesn't have an Air Force. Well, neither does anybody Iraq is fighting with. Why is it our job to go over there and do it? Why is it our job to continue to spend billions of dollars defending Western Europe? Look at the situation in Libya. I think it's a very good idea that people are trying to keep that thug over there from killing his own people. But why was it America's responsibility at first? We're nearly 4,000 miles from Libya. France and Italy, if the wind is right, could spit and hit it. Why aren't they able to do it? The answer is, that we have let the rest of the world become totally dependent on the American military. And again, I don't want us to be weak. The strongest air force in the world is the US Air Force. That's as it should be. But you know what the second strongest air force in the world is? It's the US Navy. Now, I don't think we have to be first and second. 
Maybe we could be like the Air Force would be first and the Navy would be tied for third. We'd still be stronger than anybody else in the world. There's this problem that the rest of the world has gone dependent on us. We're putting missile defense in the Czech Republic, Poland, and Romania to defend them against a missile attack from Iran. I didn't make this up. There is no indication that Iran is planning to attack them. People say, well, you know, we're allies, and that's what allies do. Allies send troops elsewhere. Well, how come nobody ever sends troops here? Where are the French and Belgian troops on the Mexican border? It's a one-way street that we have. And so, but you have to understand that the military budget this year will be $700 billion, given the two wars. We could cut, in my judgment, $200 billion of that and be as strong as we need to be and in no danger from anybody else, put a lot of that into reducing the deficit, and then have some to take care of the quality of life here, including institutions like this. And the point is that a fairly small amount of dollars here would have an enormous impact compared to what it costs to wage major warfare or station troops with this uh, high technology elsewhere. So I'm here to congratulate BCC for one more example of the great work it does, to thank the private sector people who have participated, not just for the good work that you do through this program, but for helping the country understand that the private sector and the public sector are not enemies and it's not a zero-sum game and it's not one or the other. Each has a role to play in our economy and in our society and it's only when they work together that we get the maximum. And then the final point is, and I know I see my colleague Bob Cazera here and I know he cares very deeply about trying to increase his funding, but he's been at a disadvantage because we at the federal level have been cutting back so that people like Bob and the others in the legislative delegation who've been very supportive of this institution are denied the resources they need and there's a place that we can get them. America should continue to be as strong as it has to be to deal with any possible threat. But the time has come for us to tell the rest of the world that we are no longer the universal first responder. That we are no longer, and you know, by the way, when you're using your own money, you're a little more cautious. We have many allies that tell us how threatened they are because they're not gonna have to pay for it, we are. If they had to pay for it, you know what? If we wanted to make the people in Western Europe feel safer, the best way to do it? Tell them they have to defend themselves. Because if they tell us that they feel threatened and we're gonna spend the money, that's okay. But if we told them they're gonna have to spend for themselves, they'd suddenly decide it wasn't so necessary. So we could make them feel safer and save some money. Uh, I will be going back to Washington next week and I will continue this effort. And we're beginning to make some progress. People are beginning to understand that. I have been working with Ron Paul the most conservative of the Republican candidates for president on this particular position. We were about to put out a letter with several others joining us, namely that America should be strong enough to defend itself and to go to the aid of those nations that are allied with us that may be threatened, but not be the, and are too weak to defend themselves, not be the universal uh, police force for the whole world. We save a great deal of money and when we do that, we will be able to take this institution's good work and increase it so that it can serve all the people who need it. And let me go back to end where I began. When Alan Greenspan and Ben Bernanke, two men appointed, by the way, every president, going back to Ronald Reagan, Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, these five men, these two guys have served, all five of those presidents, they've been supported by both of them. Those five presidents don't have a great deal in common. What they have in common is that they both put people in to head the Federal Reserve who tell me that increased funding for institutions like BCC is the best thing we can do for our society economically and socially, and I'm determined to try to do it. Thank you. Congressman Barney Frank, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes it's hard to get him to make his opinion known, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, Congressman Frank. And uh, before I move on, I, uh, I'm back to uh, introducing our director, but I did want to acknowledge uh, uh, Representative Robert Cazero, who is here from uh, New Bedford area, a strong supporter of BCC and the region, cooperative education. 
Mrs. Cazero, very active in our co-op uh, program. So uh, it's a family affair. And thank you, Bob. Thank you so much. <laughs> And now, as I was saying before, I want to introduce our director of the program, uh, a very important person who has built it uh, uh, to a great uh, jewel of the region, uh, uh, Peg Coro. And I want to also recognize Nicole Heaney. Nicole, uh, wherever you are, raise your hand. Where is she? There she is. Nicole, there you go. Okay. Uh, Nicole works uh, uh, with PEG, and uh, we just have a wonderful co-op program. It's always a, a battle every year in the budget to fight for funding, uh, but uh, we've managed to do a terrific job with it, and uh, I want to acknowledge the great work. I'm deeply grateful for uh, the work that PEG and Nicole have done. And now it's my pleasure and honor to introduce to you the director of our co-op program, uh, PEG Carl. PEG? Thank you, Jack. It's, it's been 25 wonderful years. Um, and I'm going to take just a few minutes of your time today to thank some very special people. First of all, I'd like to thank the Bristol Community College Foundation for funding this event. Worthy celebration, and thank you so much for your support. And this is where every year, if you're a graduating student, just remember to give a little back in a few years when you're rich and famous. And I know with co-op, we've put you right on that track. Uh, thank you to Chef Carissimo and the culinary arts students for the wonderful breakfast. I hope you've enjoyed it. And because it's the 25th, uh, this is very disconcerting. I just have to, and I don't want you to look back, but to be standing here and see a picture of myself from 20 years ago on the screen <laughs> was a little scary. Uh, <laughs> But uh, it is the 25th anniversary of co-op, and it's, and it's proper that we thank many of the individuals who made this program possible, both past and present. And I'm not going to name you all by name, but uh, every day that I'm in my office, I'm very grateful to the administrators of the college who, back in 1987, had the foresight to design a program that is so current today we're still being modeled by other community colleges and other colleges around the United States. It's an um, uh, academic program, it's centralized, and it's all the things that make us very special. Uh, and also to all of the administrations since that very beginning who have continued to support us and provide us with the resources to make our job successful for the students. Another group that I need to thank is the program coordinators. We've only had a very few coordinators and office managers in the years that we've been here uh, at BCC, and that says a lot in itself. Um, the other group that's been very helpful to us over the years is the co-op advisory board. They're such a loyal group. We can pick up the phone and call them at any time and um, help us make the matches that we need to match make. And a very deep appreciation for the employers in the area who continue to support us and work with us. And there are many, and there have been thousands of them over the years. Uh, I, as Nicole had me digging through archives, I came across an old appointment book from 1988, which was the first year that I started in the program. And we had Globe Manufacturing. I had appointments at Decnatel. I don't know if any of you remember those. But so many of the companies have changed, and we've continued to change and meet the needs of the region, hopefully. Uh, and all of our other community partners, the Chambers of Commerce, the Workforce Investment Boards, many of the nonprofits that we work with, all have been there to support us and work with us for all these many 25 years. We deeply, deeply appreciate it. And the other side that I needed to say today is that there are three individuals who are responsible for this event happening today. I'm not one of them. I'm the mother of the bride. Uh, <laughs> but the three person, people that I would like to recognize, and I'd like you to stand so we can give you a round of applause for this, is first Ann Cazera, who is the co-op coordinator at, uh, co-op advisor at the New Bedford campus. 
Oh, I wanted to hold it. <laughs> Deb Line, who was our office manager. And of course, Nicole Heaney, who is the co-op coordinator. Thank you all for planning this wonderful event and thank you for all your extra hard work this semester. Uh, this is where I real quickly do the state of the program. We're the largest com uh, cooperative education program of all the community colleges in Massachusetts. And I can say that unequivocally because I have been working at the statewide level for the last two years. And we're putting together some common documents and processes and procedures for all the community colleges to use. It will be official and hopefully our handbook that we've written will be published in uh, August. So many of the other community colleges have come to us, want to know what we're doing, what we're doing right, how they can do the same things at their college, and we've managed to gather a few ideas from some of the other ones to make ours even better. Uh, this year, as Jim said, we, we had 244 students that completed the program, meaning they earned their credit, did their internships. But in addition to that, what you should realize is we actually served 867 students, which means that there were students who applied for jobs and we uh, matched, gave career information. Maybe they came into our office and it wasn't quite time for them to do co-op. And we uh, will probably be working with them next year. But in total, that's almost 1,000 students uh, with a, an exceedingly small staff. <laughs> in addition, um, and, and part of that is my fault, by the way, because I've not been here. Um, in addition, our program also has a grant, uh, a Massachusetts um, Department of Elementary and Second Education, uh, Secondary Education Connecting Activities grant. We've continued to partner with the Greater New Bedford Workforce Investment Board and the New Bedford Area Chamber of Commerce to provide internships at high schools. And those numbers were 552 youth in the region served with career information, internships. In addition to, inter in addition to the internships, they provide career fairs for the high schools, um, some mentoring and job shadowing. They also uh, work on a team with the state um, to provide a, a construction career day for students who might be interested in that field. So another very busy group out of my office, or our office. Um, they actually worked with 160 employers this year. We in our co-op office, so combined with the two of them, we had 141 work sites. So you can see that there's a great number of work sites within the area for both the high school students and for our own community college students. Um, and um, I'm sure there are many, many people here that I could name by name that are here that it's great to see after all these years. Uh, many people have contributed to the success of this program over the years. And I would like to thank you all. It's been wonderful and hopefully the model for this program goes on for another 25 and more. Thank you so much. Great job, Peg, thank you. And welcome back, and we know we're gonna lose you again as you finish out your sabbatical and do your work on cooperative education, but it'd be good to, to see you back here full time. Uh, next person we're gonna have come up is somebody I've had an opportunity to work with for a long time. Um, I don't know if he's the dean of the local legislative delegation, but if he's not, he's close to it. Um, State Representative Bob Cazera has re represented the North End of Bedford and, and, a Cush and a town of Acushnet, and probably has other communities, but those two I know for sure for a very long time. I have worked with him on, when I was at the chamber, on, on economic issues, on health care issues, on public safety, on social ser and human services. But the one thing that I always knew about Bob uh, in terms of uh, what he was interested in, and I think his wife had a lot to do with it, is his interest in education. Uh, he has been an education-oriented legislator from day one when he started. And so we're very fortunate to have him uh, re working on behalf of our region, representing many of our people, and to have him here this morning to make a presentation. Bob?
Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with all of you uh, this morning, and I'm pleased to join with you in celebrating this milestone event of 25 years of cooperative education here at Bristol Community College. You've heard from some uh, very distinguished speakers. Uh, Congressman Frank talking about uh, the need to allocate more resources to community colleges because we make them the work engines uh, for our society to make sure that we not only educate people, but we put them to work. President Sprager, who's dedicated his life to academia and to, at the community college level, and who talks about the need for literacy and higher levels of educational attainment. Um, with myself, I married into a family of educators. Not only my wife, but my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-laws, and uh, I knew I was in trouble because we sat down to Thanksgiving meal at their house and they talked about dessert and what they're gonna do tomorrow. And being educators, the day after Thanksgiving, there's no school, school children don't go to school so, uh, uh, the day after. So that's their shopping day. And um, I and maybe a couple of brother-in-laws had to report to work the, the next morning. But education, uh, is the key. It's important to our family. My wife went all the way to get her doctorate. Um, our oldest daughter has a master's degree and the youngest one is in a six-year program that will lead to a doctorate in, in pharmacy. So we value education and that's why this celebration of 25 years is so important because you're providing young men and women and maybe older men and women at Bristol Community College with the opportunity for a meaningful educational experience while they're pursuing their education. And I don't think uh, there's nothing more that you can say to that. That is very, very important. That's linking what the classroom is all about. It's preparing them for the world of, of work. And with that having been said, I'm going to make a couple of uh, presentations here. But first, I want to recognize what each and every other speaker before me has this morning, and that is hats off to the employers, the partners, both in the private sector, and it's good to see my friend Mike Salutes here from Precise in, in New Bedford, and all the um, partners in the public sector uh, for being willing to take on these students because uh, you're providing them with uh, an experience of a lifetime. I know firsthand from my wife that uh, one person that she managed to get placed at one of the law offices was offered a job and was so proud that she had this job before she even got her degree. And that says a lot too. And so without further ado, I'm going to call, and, and then my purpose for being here this morning is to recognize the uh, Cooperative Education Department. So I would call on Ped Curo and Nicole Heaney to uh, receive this citation from the Massachusetts House of Representatives. And while they're coming up, I'll take the time to read it. <clears throat> the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the House of Representatives, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Bristol Community College's cooperative education program. In recognition of providing students and employers with high quality experiential educational opportunities for 25 years. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors given this 19th day of May 2011 uh, at the State House in Boston signed by the Speaker of the House, Robert DeLeo, and myself, Representative Robert Kazira. And I'm very pleased to um, note uh, for you, Peg and, and Nicole, and for all of you, that uh, I have had uh, my 13 colleagues from uh, Bristol County, from the Bristol County uh, House delegation signed this. The, uh, these are representatives, uh, Pat Haddad, Antonio Cabral, Elizabeth Poria, David Sullivan, William Strauss, Jay Barrows, Kevin Aguiar, Stephen Canessa, George Ross, <coughs> Paul Schmidt, Christopher Markey, Shauna O'Connell, and Steve Howitt. Uh, we all know how important the mission is that uh, BCC uh, has. And um, we do wish that we could provide uh, more. These are very difficult times, but it's nice to see uh, innovation working at the community college level, especially at BCC. 
And uh, we join in extending our best wishes to uh, BCC for continued success in the cooperative education program for the next 25 years and more. So congratulations, and it's a pleasure for me to present this to you, Ted. I have one more citation, and I won't be as wordy. I had a lot of thoughts as he was speaking in terms of saying, well, what, what can I say in terms of a retort? Um, I have been a legislator for a, a good many years. And uh, from both sonority and age, um, I am the dean <coughs> on both fronts. And at one time, that was a very touchy uh, issue with, with my colleagues. It isn't any, any longer. I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that you know, our granddaughter, our first granddaughter celebrated her first uh, birthday um, a week ago today on, on uh, May uh, 12th. So uh, I'm over that. But um, <laughs> one of the things that I have done in the 22 plus years that I've served in the legislature is involve myself with issues of um, jobs, economic uh, development, uh, at-risk youth, adult learners, and um, the role, the enhanced role, uh, the almost dumping on community colleges uh, for uh, kids that have dropped out of school, um, adults who have been displaced from their, their jobs and their need to get their life back on, on track. And we do need to do more. Uh, certainly what Congressman Frank spoke to you about uh, would be a, a very welcome start. Uh, but the state has to learn to step up with resources as well. And uh, over the years, uh, one person has been a connector with, um, and it's a person we're going to honor this morning because he's not only a graduate of uh, Bristol Community College, but he's been a uh, key uh, partner in the uh, cooperative education uh, department. So I'm very pleased to uh, call up Jim Mathis to recognize him for his many years of service with this program. <clears throat> and I won't read the citation, but I will present it. Uh, it's well deserved. He's an individual who has um, engaged himself in the community, first in New Bedford in the Chamber of Commerce, and then with the SMILES mentoring program, not only uh, in New Bedford, but also in Fall River and in the South Coast area. He's made a dis distant difference almost single-handedly in what he's done in putting together a network uh, with the SMILES program. He always asked me to give some, some time. I've, I've yet to say yes. I, I've been meaning to. I'm, it's on my agenda to do, and one of these days I, I will. But uh, he's made a difference. There's one man who's made a difference, and not just with SMILES, but in terms of the uh, um, model he's been for uh, young men and women throughout our, our region. So uh, Jim, I'm very pleased to present this to you for the uh, many years of active service you've given the uh, cooperative education program here at BCC and for your service on its advisory board and for being the MC today. Congratulations. That's good. Nicole, was that you who did that? Yeah. Bob, thank you. That was uh, it's very humbling. I very much appreciate it. Uh, I left my stuff over there. Okay, I know what's next. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's waving at me over here. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, what a bunch of great speakers this morning. I mean, uh, I love listening to Jack because Jack's so grounded in what he does and it shows up in what the school does. Have uh, our congressman here this morning talking to us. Um, and if you, it goes back in time for me. I first met him when he, I think, had his first fundraiser here, probably close to 25 years ago, uh, and was standing by himself at the door when I walked in the room. And two guys, obviously a lot younger than they are now. One of them's gone on to become a national icon. The other one hasn't. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, Barney Frank is our congressman. Not only is he effective for us, but you know, Barney Frank is known all over this, all over the world. So we're very fortunate to be able to have such great uh, people speaking to us here this morning. 
Next one's No Shrinking Violet. Uh, Nicole Heaney is a program coordinator for BCC's Cooperative Education Program. Um, she's done double duty while Peg has been out on sabbatical, and I know Peg trusted her with this program because she knows how capable she is. I've come to know her uh, at Smiles, where I work, not just because she's one of our volunteer mentors, she's one of the few certified mentor trainers in Massachusetts, and we've actually put her to work helping her train some of our mentors. She's uh, got a lot of talent. So with that, we're going to get to a really special part of the program right now that Nicole's going to lead us through because we're going to hear some stories, some really good stories. So please welcome Nicole Heaney. Thank you. <laughs> I was worried about that step. Did anyone watch American Idol last night? I got my low heels on. Um, thank you, Jim. That was very nice. Um, Again, I know today is a day of a lot of thanks, but it is really important. Um, at a time when things seem very dismal in the economy and in the world in general, I think it is important to take days like today to actually celebrate good things that are happening. Um, it's easy to get bogged down in all the problems that are around, and it's important for everyone to come together and to celebrate our students' success, because that's really what today is about. So um, I did want to thank our advisory board again, um, not only as people who guide us, but they also serve as our employers. The four chambers are vocal advocates in the area, and they really um, advocate with their members to utilize the co-op program and to partner with us. Um, Precise and Light Allier have been great in offering our students paid co-ops, which is very unique in this economy. And South Coast Hospitals and um, the police department offer the students wonderful internships in a variety of disciplines. And of course, Smiles, Jim has been our chairperson of our advisory board and a huge advocate of the co-op program and BCC for 25 years. So thank you for that. So in 1987, uh, the folks at BCC, including Jane Staples, wrote a grant to the Department of Ed, the Federal Department of Ed, to fund a co-op program. And under um, Jane's leadership and Peg subsequent to that, you can see that the program has really grown. We had a lot of fun this year going through, there's a part of BCC called, I think it's called the vault or the pit where we dredged up all of the old um, files and got to look through it and we got to see a lot of funny pictures. But in so doing, we found some interesting things and, and searched for some students, some alumni, to see where they are today. Um, in those, uh, since 1987, we've counted somewhere, it seems like between 3,500 or 5,000 students that we've served, 3,500 placements over the years partnering with the local businesses. We have 240 this year alone, and each year the number goes up. Uh, businesses and students realize it's imperative to do an internship while you're in college, not only to be competitive in the job market, but also because businesses now are looking as, at the internship as your first job, whereas many of us got out of college and went to our first job just to get experience. Businesses are requiring that you have that experience now, and you need to get that first job experience at your internship. We have a long reputation of responding to regional employers' needs and concerns, and the cooperative education program is just one example of a business education partnership that's been extremely successful. We've partnered with thousands of small and large and medium-sized um, for-profits, nonprofits, governmental agencies, community-based organizations to transform the workplace into a learning laboratory. Co-op is just one piece of the engine that powers economic development in the region by providing businesses with an educated and motivated workforce. Our graduates stay in the region. They may continue on for their four-year degree, but for the most part, the majority of students stay right here in the region. They become leaders in our community. They stay in the region. They buy homes here. They start businesses here, and they raise their families here. So this is all a huge part of economic development in the region. We had the opportunity to invite some co-op alumni back, and anyone who's wearing a gray badge that says alumni, I'd like you just to stand so people can recognize you and say congratulations. <laughs> Including two of our own staff members in the co-op program, Deb and Zell. So, um, 
I'd like to bring up two alumni speakers today who would like to say a few words about their experience with the co-op program. So would J Detective Jeff Majewski from the Westport Police and Brenda Viveros, who's a team leader with BMC HealthNet, both of whom come on, have um, participated in the co-op program and just had a few words to say. I would just like to say thank you, and it's truly a pleasure to be here. And when I was first contacted uh, by Nicole and asked about the co-op program, I couldn't believe that 25 years had gone by, or just about 25 years had gone by that fast. Uh, but it, it caused me to reflect a little bit on uh, the opportunities that I had been given in the last 25 years. And that's truly what the co-op program is. It's an opportunity. In my case, I worked with the Fall River Police Department, and basically it was an opportunity not only for the police department, but it was an opportunity for me. It was a chance for me to prove myself, and I did just that. As a result of the work that I did with the Fall River Police, I, I analyzed uh, several different uh, crime events, if you would, uh, related to drug offenses. And it, it took a lot of time, and it took just about the entire semester that I remember. But as a result of the work that I did, the Fall River Police Department was able to secure quite a lot of grant funding to attack the city's drug problem in the late 1980s. So I was very proud of that. Uh, shortly thereafter, I was hired with the Westport Police, and I've been there just about 22 years. In that time, uh, a, lot, a lot has changed in the law enforcement field, but I've had a chance to do many different things. I was uh, the school resource officer for a while. I was a patrol supervisor or a sergeant for just about 11 years. And then about three years ago, I transferred into the, de the detective division, which has been very rewarding. Um, one thing I would like to say uh, to uh, the entire uh, community of Bristol Community College, that you have given me an opportunity more than once, okay? The first opportunity was back in the day when I had a chance to work with the Florida Police. But the second opportunity was a few years ago when I became part of the adjunct faculty in the criminal justice program. And I have to say that I am, I am proud of that. So uh, basically, I would like to thank all of you for giving me that opportunity and I am proud to be part of the BCC team. Thank you. Good morning. So again, thank you um, for having me here. It's a pleasure. My name is Brenda Viveris and I, um, I'm a proud alum of Bristol Community College. I was placed at the Fall River Chamber of Commerce, actually, for my um, co-op internship in summer of 2004. And um, I think, first and foremost, my advice to students who might be in the room is really create a relationship with whomever it is that might be placing you, either Nicole or Peg, whoever it might be, because Nicole did such a wonderful job of pairing me with my co-op. So of my placement, uh, she kind of knew who I was, knew what my style was, where I was going, and that enabled me to get into an establishment and organization that really allowed me to um, observe, to learn, and I had the, um, I was blessed to have a very good mentor, Deanna Victor, who was no longer there, but she was the media specialist at the time. And I was able to um, really learn a lot. And also one of the most important things that I think I learned was what I didn't like about it. And so that was very important to me because I understood what I took pieces. And I also observed um, other people's positions at the same time as well as what I was there for. And so I was able to really customize who I was and going forward and understanding how I needed to proceed so I knew that I absolutely hated having a deadline that I needed to have to go to print in the paper, um, the news and views, I hated that and I knew I could never be under that pressure. And I loved being in the community and doing the interviews with all the organizations and I love that. So that has really helped cultivate me into uh, my position that I hold now with Boston Medical Center Health Net Plan. As a community outreach educator, I'm able to get out into the community and, and, and 
organize events and to work with individuals that uh, might need assistance or something of that nature. Um, so I really love that, I enjoy it. Um, I was able to uh, move on and attain my bachelor's degree from Rhode Island College. And again, it's just, it's a constant um, learning curve. And of course, BCC is a place that I love, I call home. And I just have to say again, Nicole has been wonderful. Even throughout my time, I always go back and give Nicole a call and what do you think about this? And she's always right there to help me. So. Um, Again, and my last bit of advice for the students is just ask questions. And I think everyone in this room, it's so important for everyone that we all continue to be students because we learn from one another every day. Um, I had a wonderful professor here by the name of um, David Owen, Dr. David Owen. And um, he said to me, yes, 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 Professor Owen, awesome man. And he said one thing to me that stuck out and I I, I never forgot it, and he said, I have the title doctor in front of my name. He goes, do you know what that means? He said, it means I know a lot about a little. So we all learn, there's so much to know, and so uh, my last bit of advice for the students, just keep questioning, question authority, and, and don't stop until you know your answers and where you're going. And, so that is my last advice, and um, thank you, BCC. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, everybody, because I do owe so much of who I am and what I am today to this college. So thank you. OK, now we're on to some awards. Would you like to join me on stage? Each year we ask the students to nominate employers for awards that we give out one time a year. This year we received more nominations um, than I'd ever received in the past 13 years, um, which I think truly speaks to the quality and dedication of the mentors and the um, companies that we're working with. Unfortunately today we can only recognize three, but hopefully um, you do know that there really were a number of people to choose from this year. The first organization that I'd like to recognize is the South Coastal Counties Legal Services. So would you folks come on up? I'll give it at the end. Okay, I'm gonna speak while you walk, if you don't mind, in the interest of time. Um, South Coastal Counties Legal Services is a nonprofit corporation which provides free civil legal services to low-income and elderly residents in the region. Their mission is to achieve equal justice for the poor and disadvantaged through community-based legal advocacy. SCCLS has taken four students this year and has put them into various capacities, used them in various capacities, including accounting, the administrative offices, and legal services. As you can imagine, this um, organization has a very high workload, but they always take the time to involve students in special topic trainings and professional development opportunities. They always have times to answer questions, and they always give the students challenging assignments that provide them with true learning experiences. The students got to do real work and got to see all aspects of the industry. The students report that the warm and friendly working environment made being at work feel enjoyable. The care and concern the organization shows for its staff and for its student interns carries over to the clients that they serve. For these reasons and countless others, we'd like to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That was nice. Thank you. Okay, in addition to gaining experience and having a chance to link theory with practice, another um, benefit of co-op is developing a mentoring relationship. A mentor is someone who can provide emotional support, guidance, and reassurance. They give you that been there, done that feeling that can comfort you as they navigate you through your experience. They give you insight into who the players are, what the personalities are, and can show you opportunities and challenges that are open to you. My advice to students here in the room today and to any other professional is to find someone in the industry that you admire, develop relationships that can make your career more rich and meaningful. 
So in the light of speaking about mentors, I'd like to give our next award to Liz Rubita from Catch's Law Group. Liz has been an active member in the co-op program for many years. She's a huge supporter of BCC co-op and our office administration program. The thing that's unique about Liz is that she lets students be exposed to all areas of a very busy law office. She doesn't hold the students back to a specific area, but rather she prefers to cross train them in an effort to find the exact right match for both the student and for the firm. Um, one great thing about Liz is she almost always makes a job offer at the end of the co-op period and has hired many, many, many of our students. Students comment on Liz's relaxed style and how she makes the students feel comfortable. She's always available to answer questions, hear new ideas, and is patient, and offers the students critical advice on how to improve. Liz believes in the students' ability, sometimes more than the students believe in themselves, and she trusts them to try new areas. She always provides opportunities for them to expand their knowledge and grow. This care and ability to grow her staff professionally makes Liz an outstanding co-op mentor. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, I'd also like to recognize one more great mentor. It's Gina DeGoya from Weaver's Cove, who was nominated by her student who couldn't be here today. So come on up, Gina. If there is one word to describe Gina, it's professional. She takes time to work with her students step by step by step to ensure that the student knows exactly how to do the project the correct way. After careful training, Gina encourages the students to work independently. She takes a huge interest in student growth. She teaches her students how to conduct themselves in a professional setting. She teaches them the importance of business etiquette and how important teamwork is, and each person plays an integral role in the company's success. She reviews the work, she gives it critical feedback, but more importantly, she tells the student exactly where they need to improve. From teaching her students a new vocabulary word every day to working diligently to really helping the students improve their writing skills. She's a caring professional who always makes student learning and development a priority. Her student that was with her this semester was Destiny, and you could actually chart Destiny's maturity and professionalism and confidence over the semester, and this was due in large part to, Liz's wonder to um, Gina's wonderful mentoring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for all you Thank you. Great job. Thank you. And lastly, we're going to talk about the students. So 244 of you this year, and I'm so thankful that I know today is finals and people are working and I know all those things. So we really appreciate that you have the opportunity to come and hopefully had the chance to network with some regional employers. There's one thing that I say, you know, I kind of continually hear or we see from the students by the end of the semester. And the students in their papers, you can read it and it says, but there's a theme that goes through it. The students after co-op are absolutely focused, future-oriented, eager and passionate, confident, have ability to handle challenges, think critically, and have a sense of metacognition. And what I mean by that is they go in thinking they know a lot, and when they come out, they realize that they had no idea what they didn't even know. And I think for all of us, in our own professional lives, the deeper you get into your career, you realize the less that you really know, which is the impetus for lifelong learning. So that's kind of a, a unique, unique thing I hear from the students. The student that I'd like to recognize today is Courtney Goyette, who is an elementary education major. Come on up, Courtney. Courtney was placed this semester at the Hopewell School in Taunton, and she was nominated by her um, co-op professor, Cynthia Boswell, who's in Russia today teaching. Um, we all want to be Cindy when we retire. So, um, and she was nominated by her, her, um, the teacher in the classroom, Carla Walsh. Courtney always goes above and beyond. She has put in more hours than was even near required to get the credit for co-op at the Hopewell School 
And when two students backed out and were unable to complete an after school program for children in the art department, Courtney jumped in and took over that. She spent many hours planning wonderful projects for the children. They absolutely love her and respect her and are anxious every week to see what great projects she's going to be doing with them. Courtney's mentor highly recommends Courtney for the teaching profession. She works well with students and her knowledge of the curriculum is evident. She is devoted and always puts student needs first. It is because of her commitment to her job, to her love of students and their success, that she will become a great teacher. Next, I'd like to recognize Esteban Gonzalez. Esteban, if you want to come on up. Esteban's a liberal arts major, and he's actually one of our Attleboro students. Part of the work we do in the classroom, the seminar part of co-op, is talk about transferable skills. And what we mean by that are the skills that you learn when you're in a job or you're in school that you can transfer from place to place to place. And we really try to get the students to broaden their idea of they're not just learning the tasks that they do at the job, but that they're actually developing skills and competencies. And I'm recognizing Esteban today because he really got the importance of this. Um, he understands that if you can develop skills like communication and literacy, problem solving, and acting professionally, these can translate to whatever job you do. Sometimes it's very hard for the students to break away from the task thing, and Esteban was really capable of making that leap. This semester, he was placed a little bit out of his comfort zone at Sturdy Memorial Hospital. Initially, he thought, what does this have to do with law, and how does this even relate? But what he was able to do is start to look at some of the competencies and skills that he developed. He was able to listen to patients, especially in times of distress. He was able to make sure that patients and their families felt comfortable in a very kind of stressful situation. He was able to answer questions for them and to advocate for them when they weren't able to say things for themselves. These are all skills that will be pivotal in developing a sincere legal professional. Esteban is extremely well liked both by both the staff and volunteers at Sturdy. He often helps other volunteers with their tasks. He is a wonderful young man who will do well in whatever he sets his mind to. His time, while in his time at BCC, he's been able to maintain a 4.0 GPA and just recently learned that he was accepted into Roger Williams University as a junior in their School of um, Justice Studies and he was awarded a substantial scholarship. He ultimately plans to attend Harvard Law School. And lastly, um, I'd like to honor Cassandra Camara. <laughs> yes, you. <laughs> Cassandra is a business administration major and completed her co-op this semester at Bank Five. Bank Five was a place that she had already worked and we worked very closely with her supervisor, Lisa Cleary, to develop this into a wonderful co-op relationship. Cassandra is very bright and eager to learn. She grasps easily and learns very quickly. She's professional, respectful, and highly motivated and always accepts new challenges when they're presented to her. Since she was already working at her job, what we try to do with co-op is work directly with supervisors in helping students take on new responsibility, especially when students seem to have a, a future with that company either taking on new learning responsibilities or kind of grooming them to move them to that next level. The co-op experience allowed her to view her current position in relation to higher management positions. By setting specific goals this semester, she gained valuable knowledge and specific skills that she will need when she's looking to move higher at the bank. According to her supervisor, they have both grown this semester and learned from each other in this very rewarding semester. She received all excellence on her evaluation, and when asked if she should continue in this field, it was a resounding absolutely. Co-op has pushed her to learn and apply herself in the workplace more than ever before. She learned that she needs to take initiative and not to be afraid to set challenging goals because she actually can accomplish them. 
And this is a quote from Cassandra's, um, Cassandra's paper. Co-op empowered me to make good decisions and take a leadership role in my branch. Co-op has forced me to take a look at where I am and where I would like to go. And Cassandra, I think all of us will say that we think you will go very far. Thank you, congratulations. Thank you very much. <clears throat> wow. Um, obviously, uh, this program works exactly the way it was supposed to when it was set up. It actually exceeds expectations. This college works the way it's supposed to work and exceeds expectations. As uh, I hear on the phone when I call, you might want to call here when you leave just to hear it yourself. Changing the world, learner by learner. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, thank all of you for coming this morning. Uh, congratulations to those of you who are recognized. The wonderful stories, each of the students, and I know uh, joining you are literally hundreds of other students who participated whose stories are also uh, are equally great. Uh, thank you for being here, and I hope to see all of you here next year. Next 25 years starts next year. Thank you.